On 1 March 1896, a strong and well-armed Ethiopian army defeated Italy, a European nation on the field of battle, to defend Ethiopian independence. This event occurred in the northern town of Adwa, making Ethiopia the only uncolonized African country. While it is true that Liberia was not colonized, they were an informal U.S. protectorate at the time, and nobody was ready to mess with Washington, as they had maintained a naval presence in the region, indicating that it would make some effort to maintain Liberian independence. Ethiopia on the other hand, simply managed to resist colonization, unlike the rest of the continent, that thwarted the campaign of the newly formed Italian kingdom to expand its colonial empire in the Horn of Africa. Stick with us to learn the series of events that led to the victory of the Battle of Adwa, which in turn made Ethiopia a symbol of freedom for African people globally. And how the event was popular throughout the world, which not only led to Italy's embarrassment after being widely reported in international media, but also led to a change of its government. In the late 19th century, the European powers were gaining ground on the African continent, occupying one country after another, and by 1885, the scramble for Africa was fully underway, with the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, Spain, and Portugal taking over the entire continent and dividing it among themselves. Italy had invaded Assab port in modern-day Eritrea since 1882, and with British support, Italy took control of the port city of Massawa in 1885. European colonial powers at the Berlin Conference then agreed that the newly formed Kingdom of Italy could take over Ethiopia as its colony. The Italians then began to move up along the Horn of Africa, and by 1890, they had established the colony of Eritrea and occupied much of present-day Somalia as well. In 1889, Italians signed a treaty with Ethiopia's emperor, Menelik II, called the Treaty of Uchiali, whereby Italy was granted the northern Ethiopian territories of Bogos, Hamasan, and Akeleguzai, which are in modern-day Eritrea and northern Tigray, in exchange for financial support and the provision of 30,000 muskets and 28 cannons. This was to give Menelik the military strength to take over and merge the Ethiopian kingdoms under his rule. In an attempt to trick Menelik, the treaty was written in two languages, Amharic and Italian, the Italian version recognized Ethiopia as its protectorate, while the Amharic version stated that Ethiopia allowed international diplomacy to be conducted through Italy, by choice. When the differences between the two treaties were noticed, Emperor Menelik pursued to address them through diplomatic means, but he wasn't able to, which led to the emperor formally denouncing the treaty in 1893. It has been reported that, when an Italian diplomat in Ethiopia warned Empress Taidu that rejecting Italy's attempt to make Ethiopia its protectorate would potentially cause Italy to lose its dignity, she replied that, Ethiopia too must retain its dignity, and that because Italy wants other countries to see Ethiopia as their protege, it would never be. During his rise to power, Menelik had viciously incorporated smaller Ethiopian kingdoms under his rule, where he secured his claim to the title of emperor, taking the name Menelik II and establishing a new capital, Addis Ababa. Upon hearing about Italy's plan to annex Ethiopia, Emperor Menelik took immediate steps in early 1895 and began preparing to resist any attempt by the Italians to impose dominion militarily by uniting the country's fractious provincial rulers behind him. On September 17, 1895, Emperor Menelik and Empress Taidu mobilized an enormous military force of about 100,000 troops, which was composed of Ethiopians from every tribe, culture and community, and began to lead the massive force northwards toward the Italian-occupied territories. The first clash occurred at Ombalagi on December 7, 1895, where the Ethiopian army annihilated a vanguard Italian column. The second encounter was at Makella, where the Ethiopians, for two weeks, surrounded the Italians who were stationed behind a strong fort, and by implementing Empress Taidu's strategy of cutting off the water supply of the fort, they captured and forced them to surrender. The Italians remained in their strongholds and were even considering to retreat, and Emperor Menelik was not in a hurry to attack them, but, on February 25, 1896, the Italian commanding officer, Oresta Baradieri, received a telegram from Italian Prime Minister Francesco Crispi, spurring him into action. The advance took place on the night of 29 February, where the 20,000 Italian troops advanced in three columns and fought bravely with their cannons and machine guns before facing a resounding defeat. By the end of March 1, they were in full retreat, leaving behind their artillery and around 3,000 prisoners. Casualties were reported to be severe on both sides. 
The Battle of Adwa was concluded with Ethiopia's landslide victory over Italy, and the Italian prisoners were brought back to Addis Ababa, where they were treated well and were gradually released. The very fact that an African nation could successfully resist the advancements of a European power caused a serious blow to Italy's reputation amongst its Western peers. Victory at Adwa sealed the unification of Ethiopia and solidified Mendelik's claim to the title of emperor, and figures throughout the African diaspora immediately grasped the significance of the battle, Menelik, and an independent Ethiopia. Marcus Garvey, W.E.B. Du Bois, Bob Marley, George Padmore and others drew inspiration from this Ethiopian victory. In the aftermath of the battle, Crispy's government collapsed and Baradieri was put on trial. Less than 50 years after Adwa Italy was also thrown out of Eritrea, which was restored to Ethiopia. It is for this reason that the Battle of Adwa has remained such a powerful symbol of African resistance to European colonial pursuit, even 125 years after it happened. Ethiopia influenced a lot of African nations into opposing colonialism, and consequently, the Pan-Africanist tricolor was derived from its national flag, which many countries in Africa incorporated into their national flags.